sure she needs that. So, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, this is our middle age unit and I wanted to share with you everything we did and everything we learned and what we loved and um, kind of take you around all these materials. So this is what we used for our middle ages. Um, so let me open it up and show you. And then along with the history year one, you're going to get the big book of history stories. We also got this little game. It is, oops, it is the keys of history game. It's the year one. I highly suggest you get this game if you don't have it. Um, it has all the facts on the back and it's really fun, interactive, and it helps them. I actually use these cards in the morning during our memorization and they'll actually like flip through and read and memorize during the morning. I always do that during our units so they can get to really familiar with everything that we're learning. Um, but these cards definitely brought everything to life and I was so surprised how when you do this every day or every lesson or even every other or just once a week, it really helps them remember and internalize. So um, this timeline I actually made on my own. So I made this for all of the kids. They're able to see it all laid out in this timeline. So we spent a day making the timeline and every history unit we do, we put it on the timeline. So from the Good and the Beautiful year one, we did the unit two. It's the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Um, I can't remember how many lessons are in unit two, but you know, three lessons are Joan of Arc. It even takes you through the Renaissance and it'll take you through the scientific revolution, which we really enjoy. So this is how we do our notebooking for history and science. Um, I get these clear, little notebooks. I think I got them at Office Depot and I use them for all of our st unit studies and I just change out the cover for each unit study we do. With history, with the good and the beautiful history, you're going to get the student explorer file um, and then you just print it out for each child and put it, I just put it in these folders. So for my daughter who is in seventh grade, I use the student explorer grades seven through nine. Um, and it's more in depth. There's more right reading. There's more writing assignments. Um, it's just, you know, it's perfect for her level. And which she chose to write about Joan of Arc. This essay was just absolutely beautiful. Um, so that's McKinsey's. And then for Drew, I, he really, I don't require him to do history, but he just loves to sit with us and do all of our unit studies. Um, so I made him his own folder. He's six years old and I made this cover myself and his is more like coloring um, Timeline super adorable. I actually made all of these icons myself and then he glued them on to his timeline So that is Drew's and then my boys which are they are in fifth grade um, As you can see they love to write their awesome names on their um, this is just an example of one of my fifth grader folders. He put take notes while we are doing our papers. They also have some reading assignments and mapping. So that is my fifth grade twins. Um, and then at the end of the unit, I did a little test. So I made this myself and I just made questions for each, you know, kind of general and um, they just wrote their answers and what they remembered. It was not a multiple choice test. I really did this to see what they remembered and what they got out of the unit. I loved that we did this test. It was so awesome. It was just kind of like a final review to see what they learned. I was completely pleasantly surprised by how much they retained, how much they learned. Um, so that's kind of how I did I do the student explorers. Another cool thing about the Good and Beautiful History is it has these audio stories and I didn't realize how much that helps, but it really helps my kids retain the information. We're studying King Alfred the Great, so I just Googled it and I found this fun sketch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the older kids 
They just like to do something with their hands while we're listening to the awesome audio stories from the Good and the Beautiful History. So I'm going to have them sketch and copy him um, while we're listening. And called the Dark Ages. It was an era of war. It was a time when life was hard and short. People constantly faced famine, disease, and hunger. The and just by doing that with their hands and listening to the story, I'm telling you, they remembered everything about Alfred the Great. And this is my daughter's. Isn't it so cute? Here is the hospital. And then the guest house are right here. And then the kitchen is right here. And then the church is right here in the abbot's house. And then the stable. And then here's the orchard with redwoods. Mm, that's cool. And then this is the crops with the little red gate. Mm. And then I'm missing something in both of yours. I don't see the wall around it. Do you have the wall around it yeah. to make it its own little community? Yeah. This is the oh. wall around it. Okay. <laughs> in the front of this book, it'll give you read aloud suggestions. And since we were doing unit two, I just looked at this and I picked books from the list. I picked Otto, A Silver Hand, and I read this aloud. I loved it. Howard Pyle is amazing. The language he uses, much like the Bible, um, we read the Bible every single day. And so we are very familiar with scriptorial language, like thee and thou and thine. So. Oh, I loved this book. It had a little bit of humor. It had sad parts. My kids were captivated. It was perfect for this unit. Um, so I highly suggest Auto of Silver Hand. My, my six-year-old up to my 12-year-old really enjoyed this. Connor, my 10-year-old, read Son of Charlemagne. He was captivated by this. He loved it. So 10-year-old, this would be good for a 10-year-old or even above. But he really loved this book. Every time he was done reading it, all smiles. The Hidden Treasure of Glaston. Okay, one of my other twin boys, he finished, he was reading Men of Iron, and then he had just started this. So he's still reading this. So he's about right there. And Asher read Men of Iron. It's Howard Pyle, again, the same author as Otto Silverhand. I love his writing. It's just so well done. My daughter, my 12-year-old daughter, read Wings Like a Dove. She absolutely loved this. Loved this book. Um, so this might be something for a girl to read probably later um, grade school to middle school years. And then Drew, my youngest is six, we got him a treehouse book, The Night at Dawn, and he read this, all of this on his own. So those are our books that we read throughout the unit. Absolutely loved it. For every single unit we do, science or history, I go to the library and get a huge pile of books. From all of those books, I mean, I got like 20, I had my kids pick their favorite. And these are their three favorites of all the books I got from the library. So I just decided to share the best ones. So this one, Nightology, topped their ultimate favorite from the library really cute little um, interactive book. It's really beautiful. Every page is just amazing. Um, let's see here. Okay, so you come here. It has things like Knight's Armor. You can turn open the pages. Really cool. They love this book. Oh, little pulley things like this. I love the jousting they learned a lot from. from they learn so much from just going through these library books. They spend like hours, I swear. They bring these in their bed. Look how pretty those pictures are. A little diamonds right here and jewels. So Nightology will definitely capture their attention. The next one is this castle book it has inside of the castle. And then Medieval Knights. I really liked this one too. This one has these pages. So look, you can kind of flip the page up and see. No, you can see inside. Can you see that? 
This, again, Medieval Knights, awesome. The This cross-section castle book and Nightology. Those are so in the classroom. I when we doing when we're doing history, I display the history timeline so that they can come kind of read about everything that's going on. And then I put a big picture, art picture of Joan of Arc up. I love this picture. I got this on Amazon. It is so gorgeous. I just I don't even want to take it down. It's so beautiful. Oh my goodness. It says everything about courage and faith in her goodness. Love that image. 